Hello and welcome to the second devlog for the Rouge shell, uh, the shell I've been working on. Uh, there's not been a lot of progress recently. I've been fighting with async and I've eventually recently decided that async is not the way to go. There were good reasons and there were some good benefits from that um, that I quite liked and I'm going to see if I can work out how to bring those into this system as it is. But for now, for now I want to talk about something that came up while I was working on the project and that is a top N finder. So I want to find the, the top N elements from a list of many more elements. Obviously there's a trivial way to do that. You can just use sort and then take the first 10 elements or the last 10 elements. I was quite curious to see if I could do it faster and then I came up with an idea of using quicksort and I wanted to share that with you guys. I've called the function top n, it's just a function for sorting the top n. Um, and it is basically a quicksort, there's only one small difference. So if you don't, if you know what a quicksort is, then this should be fairly easy to follow. Um, basically I stop sorting if the, the side I'm on has no elements that I need left. <laughs> That's it. Let's start at the beginning of the function. So here we have our top M function and there's two important types involved. One is a type T, that's the type of our slice we're sorting. And the other is an, a function which takes two, two items of type T and returns an ordering, basically the comparator function, right? And so our function just takes this list. It, it takes an N, which is not normally in the quick sort, but that is the number of elements we're looking for. And of course it takes the comparator function. So first check, if the length of our slice is less than or equal to one, then we don't need to do anything. Uh, it's a sorted list, it's got one element. That's basically our exit case. And then I just use the standard rand library from crates.io to get a random number. And I use that random number and swap it to the first position of the list. This is actually part of the quicksort pivot. Um, and then the way we do it in quicksort is we basically just start at the beginning of the list and we're just trying to decide should every element be on the left or the right of this element. If it should be on the left of this element, we swap that element forwards. If it should be on the right of this element, we swap that element to the back of the list instead. So, so that's why I've marked the back of the list with a variable and i, which is our pivot, I'm just going to call i because it's the one we're really counting with. So while i is less than back, as soon as i reaches the back, we've got nothing more to do. So, so we'll match on our function on element i and the element after i. So element i and element i plus one. And this could return three things. It could return ordering greater, it re could return ordering less, or it could return ordering equal. We're gonna treat them as two cases, greater and less than or equal. So in the greater case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap the item at i with the item at i plus one. And this is just something that vectors have, or this is something you can do with slices and vex in Rust easily. You just call the swap method with the two locations. Um, obviously it's pretty memory safe. There's no issues with that. So we don't have to worry about anything complicated going on. And then we increment our pivot. So basically we just swap our two elements and move to the position of the our pivot. In the other case where our pivot is less than or equal to the other element, uh, we swap that element to the back. So the element at i plus one goes to the back and then we decrement the back so that the new back place is one less. Both of these will bring i and back closer so the loop is guaranteed to finish fairly quickly. That is one pass and then once you've done that one pass you basically sort either side of the pivot independently so you're halving the amount of sort, sort time each time. And we use a random number in case the list is sorted and our pivot would be one end. So that is roughly a quick sort. And all I've done to change that is we definitely tops, we definitely sort the left-hand side because we have to. Uh, but on the right-hand side, we check, do we have to sort this? And we only actually have to sort this side because we only want n elements if the element our pivot is on is less than the number of elements we want. So in this case, basically, I'm just checking that i is less than n. If our pivot is less than the number we want, we we we... If our pivot is bigger than or equal to the number of elements we want, we actually don't need to do any more sorting, so we don't need to do the rest of this list. We don't need to sort the right-hand side of the list. Um, the other check is just, is i bigger than the length of the vec, which it shouldn't be, 
but it's worth checking. So the first top M we call is on the, the first half of the VEC, everything up to but not including I. And for the second sort, we include, we search from everything after I, not including I, to the end. But the N that we send through our limit is of course N minus I. So we know we need that many fewer elements. This here is the difference between this, this top N sort and a quick sort. It's basically one if statement saying, do I need to sort the right hand side? Big O is the length of the list time times log of the number of elements you want. That was a bit tricky to calculate because there's basically two cases. I mean, if, if you've only got one element you want, then it'll only run, it'll run one pass and then it'll half the pass and then half the pass again. So that's basically, you know, if you add one plus a half plus a quarter, eventually you get to two, that's still big O of one. And, um, but the, the more elements that you require, uh, the more actual sorting it may have to do, the more times it's going to have to reach right. So what you're logging, the number of times you're going to do it with, is the number of elements you're actually searching for. So it's, it's the length of the list times by the log of the number of the elements you want. And that's our big O time, that's the uh, time complexity. Um, here's a test of it running. So I've just got a big long list here. Um, it's got 65 is the highest element, followed by 54, 33, 34, and 12. Um, rather than actually just run it as a test, I will quickly print out the list. Um, and then I'm gonna panic. Um, so when we run this test, so here we go, we got a failure on the test and it failed with an explicit panic. So it made it to the explicit panic and our list, the first five elements. So let's check the, check the, the method. So we are sorting V, we only want the top five elements. Okay. So our first five elements, 65, 54, 34, 33, and 12 are all in order, but after that, the order doesn't matter and there's no guaranteed order there. Five is here near the end and zero is near the middle. So we haven't sorted the entire list. We've sorted most of the list. It's quicker than a quick sort because we only care about a few elements so we can skip half of the searches. Uh, if I run the test again, we'll actually get a different result for the latter half of the list. I'm not sure if you can get rid of the random. In quick sort, you need to do some random unless you're certain that the data isn't sorted when it comes in. That's everything I really wanted to say. The there There is still progress on the project, but having spent so much time fighting async, it's probably not gonna go too far too quickly. Right now, I'm just working on the history, trying to improve the way that history is logged and restored. Um, and that's why I needed to get the, the the top N most recent, most relevant history items. All right, I'll see you in a future blog.